Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today's gonna be a bit of a special video. As you can see, we have some guests. I'm Emily and I'm a first year in the nursing school. Yeah, yeah. I'm Eliza and I'm also a first year in the nursing school and I'm in the midwifery track. Hi, I'm Nusheen. I'm a physician associate student here at Yale and I'm also a first year. Oh, and also, if you didn't know, I'm Shaman, the medical student. As you can probably already tell, we're all from different programs. So what we're gonna do in this video is basically compare and like contrast a little bit between them. What does a PA do? So PAs are healthcare professionals. Uh, we can assess, diagnose, and treat patients. Um, we work in a healthcare team that involves other physicians, nurses, um, NPs. And what about a nurse? A nurse practitioner, I guess, or advanced practice nurse, nurse midwife. Um, so you all have the nursing background, so you all are registered nurses. You've sat and taken your NCLEX, your nursing boards. And then this is like another step where you are yeah, more of in a provider role where you can have your own patients, you can assess and diagnose and treat. So it's kind of just another level, but you all have like a nursing background. Okay. Does that sound good? Anything you wanna add? Yeah. Well, you can say something about me. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> nurse midwives are providers who can provide child care, they can do reproductive health care, they can work in primary care clinics, they can do a pretty broad spectrum of things. There's so many different specialties and things you can do, but like in general, I'd say like a doctor leads like the treatment plan. Before we get into like uh, more juicy stuff, it's like... <laughs> How many years of training do you need for each of the different programs? Do you want me to start? Yeah. Okay, most of them are about 24 to 30 months, so just a little bit under three years, if not three years. To become a nurse midwife or a nurse practitioner, it's a three-year program. Uh, you do need a bachelor's degree before you apply. The first year is an accelerated nursing program that you roll right into the master's program, which is two years, and you're in the last two years, you're divided up into your specialties, so you might be a nurse midwife, or an acute care nurse practitioner, or a family nurse practitioner, or a pediatric nurse practitioner, um, and there are a few others. Which is what you're doing. Yeah, right? I'm pediatric. For medical school, like a brief overview. So you need a bachelor's degree. Well, like for most schools, like Yale doesn't even need a bachelor's degree, but like everyone has one. Um, you don't need one? Yeah, it's weird. The young doesn't need them. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, just, it's really just, weird. Wait, does anyone? Uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think so. You still have to pass the MCAT, right? Uh, yeah, I guess right? so. I mean, yeah. I don't know if it's just like a technicality. I think everyone has college. Yeah, but like technically, it's not a requirement. Wait, that's insane. I didn't know yeah. That. <laughs> um. So yeah, and then you have to take the MCAT, like uh, Nusheen said. Um, and then you have four years of medical school, so like two years are like kind of learning based, like kind of like college, and then two years are like working at hospitals and stuff. And then you have um, like anywhere between three to seven years of residency, and then maybe like a little bit, like a year or two of fellowship. So that's like past college, you could be doing like more than 10 more years of school. So a lot of people are interested in the finances of the different schools. So, do you all want to talk about how much is your tuition and how much is like the um, income bracket for when you get working? Sure. Um, yeah, uh, our tuition is around eighty thousand for our two and four month program, and our income bracket, our medium income, is ninety thousand for the entire United States. And our tuition is one. 135,000 for the three years. The income bracket, it can range anywhere from like $80,000 to about $120,000. Medical school for four years, that's like over 200,000. Income bracket, it really varies, like maybe 150,000 to 500,000. So we've been like three, four months into school already. Like, do you want to rate one out of 10 what your stress level has been? Ooh. Like regarding school. <laughs> 
feel like it goes in waves. <laughs> like, I I got I just got here to college last year too, so I feel I feel like it's a pretty comparable to what it was at in college. Uh, we just had midterms week, and mm -hmm. that was probably a stress level of around an eight, mm -hmm. um, but it didn't get too overwhelming. There was enough time to do the work that you needed to do. You get in between exams, and your stress level just goes down a little bit, and you have more time to visit with friends and exercise and feed yourself well. Um, <laughs> cool. <laughs> I feel like it peaks to like an 8.5 or a 9, but then you definitely get to go back down a little bit in between and then it kind of builds back up. And then, you? Uh, for medical school, like, uh, I mean, this isn't like representative of a lot of medical schools because Yale's a little different, but like my stress level would probably be like at a 5. Um, just because like the system is so different like with exams we don't take exams in like a room when timed or anything we kind of just I just take it right there and I'm like I don't know what that is <laughs> <laughs> the food <laughs> what <Yeah>. is it? <laughs> <laughs> the exams and the there's not really any assignments or anything um, so you just do as much work as you want to so even though you end up like because you're self-motivated to do work because there's no pressure on you externally uh, the stress level is like at a five like what are also like the hardest uh, like parts of the admissions process? They look for you to have a little bit of uh, experience in the field yeah. that you're going into with the nursing um, so that you know what you're getting yourself into. Um, and aside from that, you have to write the application. Most of the schools have you write an essay. Uh, you take the GREs. Uh, Yale required three letters of recommendation. Um, you do need to take the GRE for most schools. The application process is pretty difficult, so it is getting more and more competitive with more and more applicants for very limited spots. So our program is only 40 students. All my classmates have had uh, clinical hour experiences, mostly scribing I would feel like. Most of my classmates are scribes or medical assistants or EMTs. So like what does that look like to get 2,000 clinical hours? Like, are you doing like nine to fives on like weekends or something? Or like, how do you get those? Um, most people take a couple years off okay. after school. Most schools will require between a thousand to two thousand. Um, I remember one school needed five thousand, so I don't know. I guess they can just decide. <laughs> That's insane. And, <laughs> and for medical school, there's um, the MCAT, obviously, which is like a difficult exam. Um, another hard part of admissions is you need a high GPA because it's so competitive. Like uh, PA, like the number of applicants is just increasing, it's getting more competitive. Um, and then you also just need a bunch of extracurriculars like um, research or shadowing or volunteer work, really a bunch of other stuff. Um, and then even still, you still might get, not get in even if you do all those. So uh, admissions is pretty difficult for medical school. If you could change one thing about the profession, what would it be? Job. I feel like they'll kick us out. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're gonna um, find this I think they're gonna find this video. <laughs> For like a physician, um, there's like a lot of hours um, to like put into studying and education a lot of years. Mm -hmm. So like maybe reduce those a little bit. Long hours sometimes for certain professions. Oh and also like the tuition and the cost of it, it's really expensive and it um, like it adds up over time so you're in a, in a lot of debt. So I guess reducing that would be another thing I would change. People don't know what PAs are and we, as PAs, we have to advocate and we have to explain because a lot of professionals working in the healthcare field don't know what PAs are. The difference between that nurse practitioners, advanced practice nurses can prescribe and treat patients. So I think, yeah, just a better understanding. So like, there's a lot of different healthcare routes you can take. So why did you um, pick like nursing school or PA school? I guess for me is I um, volunteered at a pediatric primary care office and I realized that I loved it and that was, I really wanted to do pediatric primary care. So I talked to different pediatricians and um, pediatric nurse practitioners and I realized that with primary care as a nurse practitioner you could kind of do three years and then you were essentially in working in a in a pediatric office versus um, medical school, you there's a much longer process with the residency. Or, hang on. <laughs> Time! <laughs> Time! <laughs> Let Eliza think! In college, I never thought about getting into healthcare. It was never a path that I was on. And then after college, I got a job working as a childbirth doula, and I wanted to 
take the next step and become a midwife and actually be delivering the baby. The things I liked about the career of becoming a PA were, was that you can specialize in anything and you can switch your specialty, which was really appealing to me. It is a shorter program, so it's a little under three years, which was appealing as well. Do you feel like there's any stereotypes for any of the professions you chose? Midwives are hippies. <laughs> Can you elaborate on that? <laughs> in what way? The way you said that. I think midwives. And is it true? I'm <laughs> 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 you a hippie. <laughs> of course. I think there's a reputation of midwives as being very like pro natural birth and essential oils and um, homeopathic stuff. The doctor stereotypes. Um, there's like this stereotype that they can be like condescending. Um, or like uh, they don't have time for patients. So there might be some truth to that. And then there is also the stereotype that like uh, the life is like glamorous or like it's really cool. Um, I don't know, I don't really see it. Don't see why. Isn't there like a stereotype that it's like glamorous? Like, like I want to get a TV. Yeah. 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 Once you have money, yeah. I guess, like... yeah, I mean maybe like in 30 years. <laughs> when you're like old and withered. <laughs> you can live a glamorous life as a 50 year old. Um, okay. <laughs> so, I'll check in with you then. Yeah. What the like college students watching, they might be wondering, like they might be interested in nursing, but there might be a stereotype like most nurses are females and like you'll be yeah. stigmatized as a male nurse. So what do you think about that? How are male nurses viewed? Are they like seen as weird or something? Like well, how are they seen at your school? I don't think so. I don't, I think that, yeah, again, it's, there is a majority female, but I think our, the male nurses are treated the same. I mean, it's, I'm sure it's different being with, like, colors of a much larger female population, but I don't know, I don't, I think that there are, there is an increase in males in nursing, and that it'd be great to have more men. What advice would you give to college students or high school students that are looking to choose, like, a healthcare profession? I volunteered on a hospital floor where I was too shy to ask anyone to let me shadow them until someone told me you just need to go say hi you need to tell them who you are and you just want to ask them to show you what they do keep an open mind definitely expose yourself I think that's really good advice and then um, just learn about learn as much as you can about other professions before you commit to one because there's so many options mm -hmm. for people who know they want to go down like the nursing route or the PA route do you have any advice for them once you know what you want to do, figure out where you want to go to do that and like the steps it's going to take to get there. Uh, I did a lot of research online and through talking to people about schools that offered exactly what I wanted and um, I only I applied to two schools because I knew that they were the ones that had what I wanted and I, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> that's awesome. That Continue getting as much exposure to patients as you can, um, the more clinical hours you have coming into your first year of PA school, the more equipped you're going to be with everything they're going to throw at you. Pre-med students, I guess I would say um, it is really hard and you have to put a lot of work into becoming a medical student. So um, you have to really gauge if you have enough passion to uh, get through all the obstacles because there are going to be a lot of failures there's going to be a lot of times where you want to quit i hope this video helped with choosing a profession or just learning more about the professions in general and if you like the video please subscribe and share it with your friends and thanks for watching we'll see you next time <laughs> thanks, Bye. Bye.